Hello people, this is our Copra and this is Let's Play the Tailor's Principle Blind. Last time we kind of cleared out everything in building A, so now let's go to building B, which from the sphinxes outside seems to have an Egypt thing going on. I could be wrong, but you know, Crow Team sure does love their Egypt. Oxy... Oxyruncus and Book of Osiris. The great irony of the Oxyruncus papyri is that such a vital source of information about this ancient world exists only because of a garbage dump. While the Library of Alexandria burned at the hands of fanatics and conquerors, uh, yeah, it was run by those as well, mind you. As I pointed out the first time we heard about it. The prime was of unimaginable insight into history, philosophy and art, which was a sad truth of the matter. But it is more complicated than, than you might initially think. The papers carelessly thrown away by the citizens of Osirunkus survive to the modern day. Though it is true that a great deal of what we know today is because of the conscious effort of individual organizations, such as the spectacular translation and preservation work done during the Islamic Golden Age. Oh yeah, we were really lucky they were doing that. They made a great effort to preserve culture and such an advanced science and technology. <sighs> Which is... So why it's such a shame to see organizations like the modern day ISIS blowing up ancient temples. These, those guys have no respect for culture. <sighs> but hey, good work to those guys during the Islamic Golden Age. That was so helpful for human civilization. <clears throat> so much more simply the result of coincidence and luck. Oh yeah. Like, uh, for example, um, the Dead Sea Scrolls, only found because of a runaway goat. Well, at least that's why they were found back then. They could have been found in them during other circumstances. And also, I believe they're called the Gnostic Text, found because a guy decided to stop in peace somewhere. Well, it's full of strange things like that. We lost text that the ancients considered to be absolutely essential, while all the trivial, even placarized work has survived unharmed. Beep, 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 beep. So if we want our descendants to remember more than glittering evil vampires and alpha two team pop stars, we have to make sure that <laughs> future civilizations look back on the great two year of 2000 thanks to the documents found in the Twilight Manuscript. We believe this gave great insight into our ancestors and how dumb they were. Book of Osiris. The Book of the Scribe of Osiris, sometimes also referred to as the Book of the Journey to Aru, is an ancient Egyptian text discovered in the excavation of Usurunkus. It has caused a certain degree of controversy among the Egyptologists, as some argue that it is a classic funeral text, such as the Book of Coming Forth by Day, while others believe it to be a poetic work not intended to be understood literally. Isn't that always the question with such old texts? Is it, some, is it really just an ancient medieval? It's really just an ancient D Dungeons and Dragons master manual, or is it something much more important? It's something that you really have to think about. Otherwise, you ascribe religious significance to everything. And in that case, well, you know, sometimes it's not an ancient fertility god. Sometimes it's actually just ancient pornography. The book tells the story of a dying man who asks the scribe about the afterlife. The scribe, a servant of Osiris, describes how the man's car, life force, will become separated from his bar, personality, and how he will have to reunite the two and become an Ak, living intellect, passing a series of trials in the Duat, underworld, in order to reach the paradise of Aru. Unlike similar texts, the book of the scribe of Osiris focuses less on giving advice or... <clears throat> a recent study, Kanahan Hassan, suggests the text may have been intended as philosophical commentary on the world of the living through the allegory of the Duat. It remains unclear whether this was the intent of the original pre-Alexandrian author or a result of a later translation into Greek. The other manuscript, which is considered to be more authentic, is too fragmented to write answers, but perhaps further excavation may... Huh. Interesting. And further uh, background for why they would decide this, decide this as a puzzle. Problems to overcome and all that jazz. Maybe we wondering why I'm looking around in here. Well, I figured, you know, if there is a sort laser source and a redirector, it might be inside one of the... Oh, oh, oh! Aha! I've seen the truth. Only Elohim can save us from eternal oblivion. Well, that might be true. I don't know. 
don't know much about this place. But still. <clears throat> a new land stands before you, my child. Oh, indeed. And know that this is a land of death, but also great beauty. As you walk amongst these tombs, consider all those who came before you and how they served the greater purpose of which you are also part. Comforting. Yeah, see, with the sunlight coming in like that, yes, it's... Seven, like before. You like that number, don't you? Hmm, I'm already collecting for this. Oh, and there's also a thing over here. That's a... Uh... Okay! No idea what's up with that. So what, do we also have some secret doors in here? We have uh, one, two, three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, and a no one locked up like this. Oh no! Proximity is causing chaos. Can't even tell if that thing's different, or if it's the same. But huh, interesting. Anyway, let's go to one. See what our first. That's a lot of yellow. <coughs> I have promised you eternal life. But know that eternity may only be attained by those who serve a purpose greater than themselves. Ominous. All else is decay. I'm finally getting some sense so of it was written in the hidden words before the beginning of time. Yes, yes. I'm finally getting some sense out of the entity in the archive, though at some cost to my sanity. I begin to think that Elon wills no more control of the world than we do. <coughs> That's an interesting hypothesis. And also a bit eerie. Huh. The dying man went on to the scribe who recited in pre-mediate, pre and said, Behold, I am weak of body. My days under the holy sign of Amun-Ra are coming to an end. For I spent my years in service of the two lands I have not studied the... Tell me, you who are wise in the writings of the dead, what lies ahead of my journey? What will I face in the land of the westerns? Hamburgers. I'm just kidding. And the scribe spoke, saying, at the appointed time, boom. It's likely the location was changed according to who the copy of the book was made for. The dying man is an avatar of the owner. In the older manuscript, this is rendered as mm, some controversy as to whether it's the dead. Compared with Kenti Amentu, the foremost of the Westerners, a child later given to Osiris. Sometimes we're thinking for a mistranslation of Burgess part. This is actually almost certainly a mistranslation by the ancient scribe. The current portion of the old manuscript is sadly not extant. Huh. Got it, lyrics. My new song with lyrics. Got a laugh about this stuff. Laugh as bed makes lol. I got it, you got it, he's got it, she's got it. Mama's got it, dad's got it, baby's got it, granny's got it, lady's got it, fatty's got it, and has got it, everybody got it, Jack's got it. Everybody's got it. Okay. Disgruntlomeister's Blockstasy, episode 204. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm afraid of dying. I don't see any reason to believe there's an afterlife. I'm an organism like any other. When my brain stops working, my consciousness will cease and I'll be gone. And know what? I can't just embrace that. I can't say I'm okay with it or I accept it or some nonsense like that. I don't want to have an ending. It terrifies me. If I had a genie right now, I'd wish for mortality. It wouldn't. Oh, but you wouldn't really want to be more, the student philosopher says. Pretentious dribble. Everybody wants to live forever. Maybe everyone deserves to live forever too. But we can't, so here we are. Live with it. I rather don't. You know, when people write stories about how much it sucks to be mortal, it always smells of sour grapes to me. It's like, oh, but we can't be mortal, so now we'll write about how much it sucks so we feel good about it. Immortality? Hell yeah. I'm sure, sure that way that it could end up sucking. But you know, cessation of existence? That sucks too, if you ask me. Ooh, a pool! There's not much to it, but it is a pool. And it's cool. 
full. Yay! Priming. More messages. Awesome. I made a box flow. Seriously, it was awesome. Huh, oh, that could be a hint. This is Ventico over here. Can't jump outside there. Okay, fair enough. Just want to check. Ah. I want over there. There might be secrets. The developers are cunning. They're also calling the sense that they leave a lot of blank space where nothing is. But hey, here's something. Something for locally cached resources. Mutation. <coughs> the role of mutation in evolution is particularly fascinating. Mutation is essentially an error in the organism's central database. A variable gets changed, a piece of information is accidentally doubled or combined with another. Most of the time, the result is the equivalent of a bug, causing anything from minor problems to complete system shutdown, in effect death. But sometimes the new information is functional, giving the organism an advantage against the challenges it faces, in which case it has a much higher chance of being passed to the next generation. If you consider how unlikely a beneficial mutation is and how long it takes for such a mutation to propagate, this process can give you an amazing insight into just how vast the genetic history of each living organism. Simultaneously, it is intriguing to consider what a major role random errors have played in the evolution of life itself. The same process that has killed so many of us, often in horrific ways, is also responsible for a very system. Yes, but that's what happens when you leave management to nature. Nature's random, wild, and chaotic. And without direction, as far as I've been able to see. Well, for this one, out with direction. Look, if the universe is with direction, fine. But I have serious questions to the management. Yeah, no worries. Eel is not only ridiculous and fast, it also has a bazillion tons of space. Even while hosting a full copy of the archive, it's totally be, you'll totally be able to handle all your project's data needs. Assuming it's output is as you suggested. I mean, those case scenario would be like centuries. That should be enough, right? Right? Man, perhaps it wasn't. One of the common misunderstandings of evolution, sometimes accidentally promoted by people who should know better, is that it is an active process. Sometimes the terms evolve as applied to individual beings, as if some invisible force had driven them to suddenly change. The truth is that individuals don't evolve. The term evolution describes a long-term process that can be observed in an entire population across time due to a blah, blah, blah. Example, in response to an external threat or challenge. If an individual coincidentally has a trait that allows it to deal with that challenge more effectively than others, it is more likely to pass on that information to its descendants. That information gives them an advantage to us, so over time they become the dominant model of the species. The individuals experience no significant genetic change during their lifetime, but each of them is part of the evolution of the species. Yeah, that's also something that annoys me when you like see sci-fi or something we talk about evolving to a higher state. That's not how it works, we're not playing fucking Pokemon! Or when people say survival of the fittest and the strongest, no, survival of the most adaptable. Survival of the one who can fit in the best. That's what it's all about. And while it has a great degree of ran randomness to it, yeah, it doesn't mean it's completely pointless and accidental. After all, we have the great sorting machine known as life. So to make sure that those who have less efficient genetic traits are weeded out. And I'm not saying that's to so sound like I'm, you know, a proponent of your genetics or anything. I'm just saying, life's rough, okay? And only our own power to make it less so means that people who were... <laughs> means that people born with less efficient genetic combinations are allowed to survive. It's not like I advocate killing the handicap or anything like, God, no, I've been put in the bin myself. I'm just saying, you know, nature's rough, okay? It doesn't really seem to care about us, in so far as I know. So, the fact that we can do something about that ourselves is actually something to be celebrated. Well, that doesn't mean you should misunderstand the, the, misunderstand the term evolution. Read a fucking book, okay? It's actually quite fascinating. Speaking of fascinating, this certainly is. Huh. God, what was this thing even called? I was so busy ranting and raving. I got two, so that's something. 
Okay, what was this called? Now I'm curious. Window through a door. You know, the tiles swing from hilarious and funny to... That's peculiar. I guess it would be simple to do this, but it seems like there should be more to it. Ah, it's slow. Okay, okay. 